Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we got Bitcoin up here on the daily, $48,550. That's where it's trading right now. Uh, not too much movement, right? We haven't really seen anything extraordinary over the last few days right now. Uh, Bitcoin uh, did top out recently at uh, just over $50 on August 23rd, but since then, it's just kind of uh, maintained its price in this level right over here. Uh, if I throw Fibonacci on here from the top, we are still, uh, you know, we're still kind of ranging, guys. We do need to get up to the point 702, and I'm assuming that is going to be $54,000, all right, $54,000. This line right over here, Again, we can take this Fibonacci from this latest decrease, and uh, in that case, we would have already hit the point 702. So, uh, breaking out of here with conviction, that is ultimately what we're looking for. You know, whether it's 50,000 or uh, $54,000, really, we do need to kind of break our way up past the $65,000 mark, make new all time highs, and then uh, at that point, keep an eye on altcoins. Now, the other thing we got to look at, obviously, XRP right now trading at $1.14. And again, not too much movement for xrp as well uh it did reach a new high on august 15th of about a dollar 35 give or take uh, and now it's hovering down and around here so we have seen that ranging as well you know the 702 we're obviously eyeing that uh, and if we took the top of this latest trend up here that would mean xrp would have to break a dollar 52 However, if we were to take the Fibonacci from this latest downturn over here, XRP already touched the 0.702, so that would have been about $1.35. Uh, and again, ranging, we could see it go as low as $0.80. Cents. I talked about that in previous videos. And just as another confirmation here, guys, I have XRP here uh, on the daily, and I've zoomed out on the chart. Going to take this fractal pattern from 2017, just bring it up here for you guys to see. Uh, what we are looking at here now this fractal pattern I like to use it because uh, a lot of these trends are looking very similar to what we saw back in 2017 right we can see these same types of moves right uh, this double bottom right over here right double bottom over here and I've uh, demonstrated this on this channel before just gonna get rid of that for a second because what I do want to do is take this trend and actually uh, kind of elongate it to kind of line this up Guys, so you can see what I'm looking at here. Just line it up real quick with um, the current trend pattern that we're seeing, okay? So if we were to extend this, you can also see... Actually, let me just move this up a bit just to get it right up there. You can also see that we are hitting the same levels here on the, uh, on the fractal as we are right now on the chart. And so if we were to come back down to this level here, now again, these fractals do not show the uh, the tails or the wicks. So, you know, when we take a look at this over here, we can see these wicks, right? But uh, on the fractal, we don't see these wicks. If we assume there are wicks and we assume that we are taking a look at uh, this trend here, right from the top of the rally to the bottom before it retraced, uh, we can see these levels also do, uh, in fact, line up with Fibonacci retracement zone. So uh, 0.5 over here, coming back down to the 0.236 on the fractal. So, so, uh, you know, this is actually looking fairly promising, uh, and we could expect an XRP to go back down to about 80 cents. Now, this would bring it down to uh, 85 if we want to kind of pinpoint that exactly, but even if we wick down 80 cents, not out of the cards, we know that 80 cent level as well is a very important resistance level, right? Old resistance uh, becomes new support, so we did see that level top out here we did see it again back in here and again back in here so 80 cents uh not out of the question this fractal all lines up with that and uh you know if this does come to fruition guys you know what this is going to mean for xrp ultimately we could see xrp uh rally right up here and see a similar price appreciation to uh what we saw back uh, in 2017, which would be the equivalent to over $13 per XRP. Great news, but we still got to wait this out. I'm eyeing quarter four, 2021, perhaps quarter one of 2022. I'm uh, going to keep going, guys. There has been some news going around here. This from Dictator Know It All, uh, and, and he's just kind of warning us XRP community below tweet makes no sense. He only just joined the SEC two months ago. So uh, apparently, there was some news here uh, tweeted out by Ryan Taylor. Breaking news the SEC Director of Enforcement, Gubir Grual, has just been fired over. The letter he received this week by an XRP hodler, and apparently uh, BitBoy Crypto, um, if I'm not mistaken, I did not see a clip, but there were some people discussing the fact that uh, BitBoy Crypto was confirming this. 
Nevertheless, he did just uh, join the SEC in June, so it, I don't know if this is true. This is still not confirmed. If you guys do have more sources that would suggest this, please do post them. So then, just to reiterate, guys, this is just a rumor. I am not taking this as fact at the moment, but uh, I did just want to bring it up just in case you guys are hearing this. Wanted to keep going. XRP underscore Crow here on Twitter. XRP Lawsuit. So he's just devised an infographic giving us uh, the latest dates that we should be paying attention to uh, with regards to the SEC lawsuit. So first we have the Telephonic Conference on August 31st. That is also the discovery deadline over here, okay? Then the SEC responds to Ripple's defendant's motion on September 3rd. So to compel the SEC to produce pre-clearance trading documents showing whether SEC employees were permitted to trade XRP and other digital assets. That is when that is due. Uh, and we also have November 12th, which is the expert discovery deadline. So uh, this is uh, at this point in time, all expert discovery will have concluded. I will link this tweet in the description. Great infographic here by Stetis on Twitter. And another one here from XRP Crow. Just with regards to uh, some of these uh, some of these airdrops, I know they are getting to be plentiful. And so uh, I just did a video yesterday and uh, Panos on Twitter did create a spreadsheet for you guys uh, to keep track of all these, uh, all these airdrops that are going to be distributed over the XRPL. I will uh, link yesterday's video if you guys didn't catch that right up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, uh, but for those of you guys who just kind of want to focus on the here and now, because we have so many, we have so many dates coming up that it's uh, it's kind of difficult to keep everything straight, but uh, no need to panic, okay? Upcoming airdrops, uh, the first ones, which uh, we still do not have any official date yet, uh, are, are going to come up, or at least they're supposed to come up in September or October of this year. So next month or the month after, and that would be uh, FLR and SGB. Uh, and that uh, would have had to have uh, been associated with that snapshot that occurred on December 12, 2020. So if you guys don't know anything about that, you are not eligible for this one. Uh, we also have DFLR or Dow Flare. That's going to be happening through Flare Finance. And uh, so once, the, uh, once you have a FLR balance, so once you receive your FLR, LR, uh, there's going to be a, uh, a 30 days after Flare Network's launch. There will be a snapshot date. And then here's some more information here, like the claim ratio, airdrop date, uh, and uh, swap DFLR for YFLR, which is a whole other thing. Anyways, guys, there are a lot of details about that. I do suggest you uh, look at that spreadsheet from Panos. So just to give you guys a sense of uh, what the upcoming dates are, September, October, this is kind of the first batch. And then down here, other airdrops for XRP hodlers. We've got uh, mid-2022, mid to late 2022, uh, and then some that are happening right now for you guys uh, just to keep track. Wanted to thank, uh, again, XRP underscore Crow for uh, just giving us more, uh, you know, a visually pleasing way to digest this information. I want to keep going. Uh, Matthew LANY, again, in that video I did yesterday, I did talk about this document that uh, it wasn't a brand new document, but a lot of interesting information from it, the Arab Fintech Advisory Group. Another thing that was mentioned in this document uh, over here, uh, so I do have this document listed. You guys can download the full thing, or rather it is linked to this web page here. Uh, was this. This screen grab over here I think is very, very telling. Business benefits of blockchain. The blockchain potential in financial services is huge and has several applications which span across payments, capital markets, trade service, investment and wealth management, securities and commodities exchanges. Analysis done by Santander suggests that distributed ledger technology could reduce banks' infrastructure costs attributable to cross-border payments, securities, trading, and regulatory compliance by between 15 to $20 billion per annum just by the year 2022. So that is uh, the estimate just by next year, a 15 to $20 billion savings. So uh, Matthew LINY just reiterating, using DLT could save financial institutions between 15 to 20 billion annually, just by the year 2022, guys. Just HODL, of course, this is what we've been doing all along, but uh, I, I thought I'd point this out just because I do think, uh, you know, sometimes we uh, we tend to lose focus. I mean, there's so much going on in the space, uh, you know, with airdrops and with the lawsuit that, you know, the proof is still in the partnerships and it is going to be when we do actually see value being derived from the XRP token. So thanks so much, Matt, for posting that. I also wanted to bring this up, guys, uh, from Bondcrypt XRP with regards to the Biloxi Exchange, a Seychelles-based digital asset exchange platform. They have just been hacked, reported earlier on August 29th. Uh, they, they claim that some wallets were compromised. Now, whether you guys are using this exchange or not, I just want to reiterate here 
that hacks are still happening on exchanges. While the exchange hasn't confirmed the amount stolen, some estimates claim that it could be around $450 million in various cryptocurrencies. Uh, Balaxi's official Telegram channel saw several updates today indicating that the platform had been temporarily stopped and its, uh, and its services due to maintenance. A few hours later, though, the exchange took to Twitter to announce a top urgent Balaxi hacked notice. Uh, it reads that the company's hot wallet was compromised and advised customers to refrain from sending any funds to the their account. Now, we cannot help if these exchanges get hacked. Um, I'm just kind of hoping they don't get hacked during that final leg up when we all have to put our cryptocurrency back on the exchange to cash out. Uh, but in the meantime, of course, keep your cryptocurrency safe, guys, in cold storage. I personally use the ledger. I do have an affiliate link in the description. I, I don't need you guys to use it, though. If you want to use it, that's great. I mean, I do appreciate it. You don't have to use it, though, if you do not want to. Uh, but a cold storage solution, always better than keeping your cryptocurrency on the exchange because uh, we are continually seeing these types of events. One Wanted to thank Boncrypt XRP for posting that. I also want to bring this up, guys, from Wrath of Kahneman here uh, with regards to Pipple. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, they're a financial services provider focused in the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia. And in 2020, they did have a job posting uh, and they did list Ripple, among others, as a responsibility for the position running their financial management system. So here was that, uh, that post here. And uh, some were wondering if uh, Pipple was a confirmed Ripple user. And uh, I mean, to be honest with you, this is the first I've actually heard of this company. Now, there are so many companies in the Ripple ecosystem, I cannot memorize them all. Uh, Wrath of Kahneman down here saying, you know, this fintech finance magazine from 2020 describes Pipple as a blockchain-based payment technology company. Uh, so does this other startup magazine. And he posts a couple of uh, resources here. Not much in print about them, but they recently partnered with Visa Direct to boost financial inclusion and also offer cards for payments. We know there was that big Visa Earthport deal uh, a couple of years back too, and uh, Earthport Ripple enabled. So uh, another partnership here, a possible one. So we're just kind of speculating on this one, but uh, I got to thank my man Wrath of Conman here for posting that. And I got a riddle for you guys. What do Steven Seagal and Ripple have in common? Well, they're both being sued by the SEC over cryptocurrency bond crypt XRP with another one here. SEC wins a judgment against actor Steven Seagal. So I hope that the similarities just end there. Uh, apparently, the SEC wins a judgment against Seagal after he ignores court order to settle crypto fraud case. Um, so this is what's happening, guys, with Steven Seagal, the uh, the 80s and early 90s uh, action movie star, a federal judge for the U.S. District Court of the Eastern District of New York, William Kuntz, uh, signed the order Friday, allowing the SEC to collect fines, penalties, and interest from Steven Seagal. The uh, famous actor had agreed to pay disgorgement of more than $330,000 to settle the crypto fraud case he was involved in. The SEC alleged that Seagal failed to disclose that he was promised $250,000 in cash and $750,000 in tokens for promoting an initial coin offering or an ICO for Bitcoin to Gen, coin with two eyes. Interesting. The uh, SEC settled the case with Seagal in February of 2020. Uh, however, the movie star made just one $75,000 payment and is delinquent on the remainder, uh, according to a letter from Maureen Payton King, a lawyer for the SEC. So, um, just another celebrity caught up here in a, in an illegal ICO scam. Steven Seagal, just the latest to be, uh, well, he did settle in 2020, but he has not been making his payments. Apparently, Seagal is currently living in Russia. Uh, Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin issued a presidential decree in 2016 granting the actor Russian citizenship. So... This story is strange, of course, but um, I just thought I'd bring it to you. I mean, it is Sunday today. It's good to have a little fun on the weekend. Michael at Valve5 Links bringing this to our attention. Lead developers of the XRPL have unveiled light accounts. So this has to do with uh, more developments on the XRPL. XRPL Labs, the software team that addresses the development of XRP Ledger blockchain platform, has unveiled a crucial proposal, a new type of account that can be added to the XRPL toolkit, guys. And here's the tweet uh, with regards to that. Announcing light accounts. Richard and Vitz Vin came up with the new standard proposal, XLS-23D, for XRP Ledger account with lower reserve requirements, consuming less XRPL space. Uh, so that is the tweet there. Just going to close that up because we can read it from here. The light account proposal also includes sponsored accounts. As per the project's GitHub, it is proposing to allow XRP hodlers to open a new type of XRP ledger account or a light account with one XRP only. So that is the reserve, the account reserve for regular accounts. It is five XRP plus 15 redeemable XRP. 
uh, XRPL Labs lead developer Vitz Vin added that light accounts functionality will be limited. Uh, they will support only holding, sending, and receiving XRP tokens. They cannot be used, for instance, to create offers, checks, payments, channels, or hooks. So a limited account, however, you will only need one XRP uh, as a reserve. Unlike the current uh, types of accounts, and uh, you know, if you're old school, you remember the 20 XRP that uh, was needed to open a new account. So uh, this is just something new. The second part of the proposal is submitted to introduce a sponsored account type. It opens up an avenue for sponsored users onboarding on XRP Ledger. Uh, once an XRP hodler pays one XRP for a sponsored account, his or her clients can use it. If they do not, one XRP can be redeemed by the sponsor. So light accounts, uh, the latest development on the XRPL. Wanted to thank Michael for bringing that to our attention. And with more digging comes more scrutiny of the SEC's uh, decision to sue Ripple. Now, this coming from James Rule XRP here on Twitter. Things that make you go, hmm, I remember this. Chairman Jay Clayton, public calendar, guys, this was back from 2018, okay? August to, uh, or basically the month of August 2018. What did Jay Clayton have on his docket on August 10th, 2018? He had a meeting at 11 a.m., a meeting with Ripple, including Brad Garlinghouse, CEO David Schwartz, Chief Technology Officer, and John Roscoe, Special Assistant to the President, White House Officer of Presidential Personnel. Interesting meeting that we seem to have forgotten about over all these years. Um, now that there's the lawsuit, of course, Ripple's lawyers are probably looking for any information that will help their case, that would, uh, in fact, sink the SEC's case against Ripple and XRP. And, um, you know, I've said on this channel before, I'm sure they scour Twitter and uh, find different information. I mean, Jeremy Hogan has even said himself that uh, there's one member of the XRP community specifically who he said, boy, I would hire you in a second to be my legal researcher. And and, uh, you know, I do believe this is a lot of help to Ripple's lawyers in a lot of ways because it is impossible to find every single gem under every stone, you know, in every nook and cranny. So there is this. Who knows what was said at that meeting? Maybe they've already addressed this. I also wanted to bring this to your attention, guys. Uh, this from Real XRP Boy here on Twitter. This is a clip from a panel here from Ripple uh, discussing some of the legal aspects. Now, I believe this was taken back in late, I I'd say either late 2018 or early 2019, because then the speaker talks about how 2019 is going to be a, uh, a fundamental year for uh, cryptocurrency regulatory clarity. Of course, you know, today in 2021, we're still waiting on this. But I just wanted to point out a few things that she says here in the first minute of this clip. Listen to this. Uh, so I think the um, the lawyerly answer to the question of what will, will be painful is it depends. Um, I think that some of the clarity, I, I agree that we're going to see greater clarity. I think that some of the reason we're going to see it is because we're going to see more litigation. Um, and I am so glad that that is not part of my job anymore. But um, I think the we're already actually starting to see if you haven't followed, they, they've kind of flown under the radar, but a couple of um, uh, sort of lower matters but in in kind of high profile cases have had um judges issue orders in recent weeks that um i think it's going to really put regulators like the sec and cftc and others who we care a lot about uh, on their toes because if judges are coming out with orders denying motions or or what have you that um that maybe contradict public statements that a commissioner have, has made or or at least call it into question um, the clarity is going to have to come uh, one way or the other. It's going to get teased out. So uh, if you're on the wrong side of that litigation, it is not, it's going to be a painful year. <laughs> um, All right. And I'll leave it there. I will link this tweet in the description for those of you guys who want to watch the rest of it, but it's going to be up to the lawyers. You know, we've heard Gary Gensler say this too. It's going to be up to the lawyers to decide. And then what's going to happen is the SEC is going to have to fall in line. They can no longer uh, do what they're doing, what they're currently doing in the space, which is not really doing too much, not really giving any guidance, kind of saying one thing over here and then saying another thing over there, not giving any cryptocurrency clarity. And so we have this clip here and uh, you know we're hearing once we have that clarity, then the SEC will have to fall in line. Again, this is a critical case for not only Ripple and XRP, but the entire crypto industry in the United States and by extension worldwide, because uh, we know other countries do take cues from the United States. Uh, not everybody, but some do. So interesting to make a note of this. And on the heels of this, guys, I also wanted to mention this great tweet here from Humble Peasant here on Twitter. Ironically, in July of 2018, Gary Gensler himself in a testimony to Congress cited Hinman's speech as what he saw as the SEC's official view. So boom, back in 2018, 
Gary Gensler, of course, this is before Gary Gensler was the head of the SEC, he saw Hinman's speech as what was the SEC's official view. And guys, here is a uh, excerpt from that document just describing that. Uh, thankfully for us, and uh, I got to thank Humble Peasant here, he did highlight a lot of these points here. I do have that uh, the link here to Homeland Security Digital Library. If you click on this, you can open up the PDF with the full thing. But I'm just going to read you this. To bring greater clarity to these markets, the SEC must also determine how best to bring into compliance the over 1,000 ICOs and numerous crypto exchanges exchanges still in operation in the US of work ahead of them to bring the issuer based crypto market into compliance. The SEC's director of the Division of Corporate Finance, William Hinman, sought to give additional direction in a speech on June 14th, 2028. We've talked a lot about this Hinman speech. Uh, I'll post a video, uh, a recent video that I did about the William Hinman uh, situation if you guys haven't caught that. The crypto markets have gotten some clarity with the SEC stating that the two largest coins, Bitcoin and Ether, are not currently securities. Currently, nearly 70% of the crypto market's $250 billion total capitalization is represented by the five cryptocurrencies, which have either been designated by the SEC as not securities, Bitcoin or Ether. Uh, and then it references uh, 0.74 down here from this source. But then down here, the Security and Exchange Commission has a lot of work ahead of them to sort of bring into this market the first part of the market. 70% of the market is commodities, but the first part, this ICO marketplace, is the SEC's. They are working at it, but they have a lot of work ahead. If you recall in the committee that there is the issuer-based crypto, which is kind of the SEC and these ICOs, there is derivative crypto, which the CFTC has, but it is going to have to have some challenges. And then there is the whole cash commodity crypto, which is 70% of this world. So Gary Gensler uh, making a distinction here, William Hinman's speech, definitely uh, seen as that pinnacle of, uh, of the SEC's opinion at that time back in 2018. Of course, William Hinman saying, you know, that was just my personal opinion, yet everybody at the SEC before the Ripple lawsuit is stating and referencing Hinman's speech as the SEC's official opinion. So this is great, guys. More great news here for the Ripple team. The SEC v. Ripple case. The more ammo we can give Ripple's lawyers, the better. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.